Do games made in C++ need a level editor? I had to ask myself the same question when I started designing levels for my tower defense game. Big engines like Unity or Unreal already have most of the functionality needed to make games. But does it make sense to do the same if you are only developing a small game? I'm heavily inspired by Bloons meaning I adopted some of their design decisions. Take the entire map for example. It is visible at all times and you cannot scroll to the left or to the right. So very early on when even designing my first level, I needed a way to place foliage aka trees, bushes, rocks, etc. and I needed to be able to place those efficiently and move them. I tried doing that in code but it grew out of proportion way too quickly and the time I spent on coding could have been better used in making an editor which ultimately led to the decision of making one. And so first of all I needed a way to tell me what is a foliage and what is not and I needed to be able to display a list of all possible foliage elements you can see in the top left here and then I needed to be able to drag and drop these down into the level. I solved that problem by separating my sprite IDs numerically so that every foliage sprite is close to each other because this allows me to create a loop beginning at sprite white plus one which would be foliage 301 and then iterating until sprite color 01. Next, I needed to be able to click and move objects in the scene. You might have noticed that not only the trees show a white outline when I hover over them, but also other objects. For example, these placement slots. Actually, they are still an old ad effect from when I had fixed positions. God damn it, accidentally deleted the bush, but uh, we're not gonna save the level, so it's all good. Now, since I can click on multiple objects in the scene and oftentimes they overlap, like for example, this tree and this bush, I needed to find a comfortable way of selecting them so that I don't go insane and keep selecting the wrong unit. And what I came up with was a basic hitbox around the center of the sprite. For example, if you notice this tree only lights up if I'm actually hovering around the middle of the tree. If I go further down, the hitbox disappeared, indicating that if I click with the left mouse button, nothing is gonna happen. I make the hitbox relatively small, so that it's still possible to have some overlap of my objects while still being able to click on mostly anything in the scene. It's definitely not perfect and sometimes annoying, but it works out for me. The next big problem was, how do I select a unit and then move it? You know Notice that I can move many different objects and they all have their own data. For example, this light that I have moved right now has additional data to the right. And then this tree over here doesn't have any data. I solved this by creating a structure that contained a selection type. And so whenever I select, for example, a light source or a foliage or a placement slot, I would create this hovered item and assign the data so that I know what am I selecting and what is the array index into that selection. Because because I keep foliage and lights in different arrays. And yeah, I still have the placement slots, uh, but ignore those. They don't exist, okay? With this functionality alone, I can already create very nice levels, aesthetically. But a level is more than just aesthetics. We need some enemies, some big dudes, and they need to follow certain paths. So I came up with the idea of waypoints that the enemies would follow, and once they had reached a waypoint, they would just move towards the next one. That resulted in very choppy looking animation when these enemies would follow along the path because they were just connected through linear lines. And so I wanted to spice it up a bit and make this feel more natural by adding in Bezier curves. And so on my editor, I needed the ability to draw Bezier curves and draw handles, allowing me to make the path the enemies follow a lot smoother and seem more natural. It's worth noting that this could also be fixed by placing a bunch of waypoints, but I felt like in the long run that would be way too much work and wouldn't feel as natural as a Bezier curve. In case you're wondering how I learned about Bezier curves, I can recommend the video The Beauty of Bezier Curves by Freya Holmer. But if you want the short version, it's just a bunch of lerps. Quite simple to implement. The next thing I needed to solve was how would I spawn enemies? And I had two options. I could either make fixed spawns or I could randomate how many enemies would spawn and when they spawn. And I decided on a mixed approach. I really like that you have certain enemies that spawn always at the same time. For example, in my second level, I will always have flying units spawn at the exact same time and then at the very end 
there's going to be a fire unit that behaves differently, sort of introducing mechanics at certain points in time where I think they would fit. In order to do fixed spawns, I needed a time when they spawn and a path in which they spawn. And if I had multiple rounds, I needed to know in which round they would spawn. For example, in this level, I decided to hard code four enemies. The first enemy would be a brute, a big egg spawning at 25. I think this guy is not insane enough yet for how big he is. I need to power him up. And then I have three burning units spawning about two minutes in, basically signaling another key point in the level that will be healing intensive. Because this level is an introduction to the healing mechanic, which is also overpowered lol. <laughs> Since this is a lot of work, placing units manually at a certain point in time for every single level that I'm going to do, I wanted to come up with a more random solution to complement the fixed spawns so that I don't have to do this much work. But it still feels generic, so I came up with an idea of a spawn graph. This spawn graph is basically a line that goes from 0 to 1 and has a height of 0 to 1. And this line allows me to create the difficulty level of the game by again, since I fall in love with those, Bezier curves. If I have a duration of a level, which in this case is 240 seconds, over the entire duration, meaning from 0% to 100%, I can sample frequencies that are between 0% and 100%, which are in this case between 0.3 and 0.15. What does that mean? This means that 0.3 enemies spawn every second for the minimum frequency and 1.5 enemies spawn every second for the maximum frequency. So at the very bottom, at minimum, I spawn one enemy every three seconds. And at maximum, I spawn three enemies every two seconds. And this graph is telling how many enemies are spawning during the lifetime of the level. This allows me to create spikes of enemy spawning and lows if I want more of a downtime between another spike. And in conjunction with the fixed system, it allows me to more or less balance my levels the way I want them to be balanced. The only problem I have with this system is that it's random and so I could potentially spawn one of these big guys way too early in the level just by chance and so RNG can be against you in this case but I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing I will just have to gain more experience by people giving me feedback so far every level felt like it is possible to beat it even with the randomness involved so I don't know if this needs fixing or not the last thing I needed was light control without lights my game looks boring, flat and uninteresting. And so I needed to add in light controls that I can enable and disable by a button click that allows me to change the ambient light, effectively making the entire scene brighter or darker if I want to. This for example creates like a swampy feel which I like very much, but then the color of the lights doesn't fit very well so we would have to change that too. I love the vibe that I'm able to create with this. The rest of the editor is more management stuff, like for example adding in more rounds and what round I'm currently editing or what type of reward the user gets for this mission. This will be removed because you will be able to buy units later on. And then of course the connection to the tile editor allowing me to, for example, this one is fucked up. It should actually be this. Bloop. Any other pieces? No. Good. If I look into the future, I see this growing and it's already very packed, so I probably have to do another UI rework. This is not the first one. The very first version of this level editor looked like crap. And um, I hope it will fit. Not gonna lie, because it's too much work. Which ties into the original question. Is it worth making a level editor? I can only speak for myself and I'm happy I made the decision. Because without it, I wouldn't be able to create these levels so fast. It's very easy to see all of the information in one place which is a huge bonus when developing. Instead of reading a bunch of lines of code all stacked on top of each other and you can't really build yourself a nice picture of how it look, actually looks in game, not to mention the instantaneous updates of changes. I can literally change the entire visuals of my game while it's running. I don't have to close the game, recompile it and then do it again. But is it really needed? I think it depends. For example, I have made this Vampire Survivors clone in less than 36 hours using my own engine and I didn't need to build a level editor at all. I just hard coded all the positions of the tiles and obstacles into the game because I knew that I was not gonna create a bunch of different 
different levels for this one. And so creating a level editor, it would have taken substantially longer to make an editor for this game because I knew I was not gonna make a bunch of different levels. At most, I will create like one or two levels. And if in the future I ever need to create more levels, then I would consider making one. And so the reason why I'm making this video is to bring awareness to the fact that if you don't use a commercial engine, you do not need to make a ginormous editor before actually developing the game. These things happen naturally as you program and progress through your own game code. If in the end you manage to create a game without ever creating an editor, then that's a win. Because I've seen so many people start with making an editor before they even have gameplay code to show off, which in my opinion makes no sense at all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do, right? You leave a like and you subscribe and leave a comment. And I hope to see you in the next one. Peace. If you like what I do, consider tuning into my Twitch. I stream at 10 a.m. Central Eastern Time, which is 1 a.m. Pacific Daytime. I also want to thank all my Patreons for supporting me on this journey. Sule, Daniel Scorbo, Techbox North, Shruptor, Michael Phillips, Felix F. and Meo Meo the Writer. Thank you very much. As a thank you of mine, Patreons get access to the source code of the game and occasionally I post pixel art that can be used for free.